Welcome back, I'm Bill. We're back today with our friend, the 1955 Model 236. It's got a number of problems. In the first video with this, we removed a stuck fuel cap and replaced the cap gasket. In the last video, we noticed that the pump wasn't functional. The pump cup was dry, so we removed the pump and I showed you how to oil the pump leather. But I noted at that point that it was leaking air out through the hole in the pump handle. That means the check valve has an issue. So we need to take a look at that. And there are a number of issues that can happen with the check valve. But first, let's take a closer look at what the check valve looks like before we remove it from this actual lantern. All right. In the last video, we pulled this pump assembly out. And this is what we saw on the inside. We pulled this out, you've got the pump handle, you've got a leather pump cup on the bottom, which is what, what catches the air and pushes it in. It slides up and down on this air stem. That's what you see sitting in the middle of this tube. And the air stem screws down into the check valve, and the check valve is threaded into a hole at the bottom of that pump tube. Now, the, the job of the check valve is to keep air from leaking out. It's got a little ball bearing inside there that, that, that falls back and forth. If it's loose, you can hear it when you shake it. In our case, what's happening is that ball is being pushed back up by the pressure in the fount, but it's not sealing properly against its seat. So it allows air to leak out. Now, the very first stove I ever bought did this. And then I sent it to someone to, to remove the check valve and fix it because I didn't have the proper tools to work on this at the time. And, he supposedly replaced it, but when I got it back and went to use it the next summer, I had the opposite problem. I pulled out the air, the air, or the pump tube, or pump, the pump handle rather, and went to push it back in, and it wouldn't budge. Well, that was because the ball was sealed uh, in the closed position, and it wouldn't let any air pass. Now, there are a couple things you can do to fix that before you take the check valve out. Just about everything I work on, I've got the proper tool, and I take the check valve out now and clean it. Um, but if you don't have the tool, it's best to leave it in place if, if, if you can. I know this is slotted, but using a screwdriver in there, these are very tight, and it's, it's easy to, 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 to get it uncentered. And if you do, you can really make a mess of the top of the check valve. And uh, if you mess this slot up, uh, it, it's very difficult to get out. You'll have to use a screw out or something like that uh, way down in the bottom to get it out, and you'll destroy the check valve. So it's best not to remove it without the proper tool. Now, what you can do if it's stuck or if it's not sealing properly, we'll start by removing the, the pump itself. Get back to where we were last time. I said last time, don't lose these little screws. They're very hard to replace. air stem came out with that. So the check valve is, is at the bottom. Carb cleaner can work wonders with these things. So one thing you can try is to spray carb cleaner down in there and let it sit and let it sit and let it sit. Hopefully what's, what the, what's keeping the check valve from sealing is some, some fuel varnish or some oil that's stuck in there. Carb cleaner should dissolve that. If the, the check valve is stuck shut, uh, you need to dissolve whatever the stickiness is that's in there. Now sometimes, what I did with my stove, I took a rubber mallet and I gave a few firm wax uh, to, the, uh, to, to the pump handle when it was out. You need to be careful doing that because you don't want to bend it. Uh, but I gave a couple wax to it and that eventually did put enough pressure on it to free it up. That said, that's not always enough to do it. So your best bet, again, spray some carb cleaner down there, let it sit, hopefully it'll seep around in that, in that varnish or that oil that's sticky that's, that's got it uh, sealed shut, um, and it may free it up, or at least it'll loosen it up, and then you can screw the pump back in and try to pump again. If that doesn't open it up, you can buy a tool that does this, but I've, I happen to have found, I've got a 9 16 
16 inch socket that's just about the right diameter to fit down in, in this tube. Water works best just in case it comes shooting back out at you. You don't want carb cleaner shooting at you. You don't want gasoline shooting back at you. But if you put this 9 16 inch, you'll, you'll have to find a socket that uh, unfortunately the outside diameter doesn't seem to be very standard. But find a socket that happens to fit in there fairly snugly. Put an extension on it. Fill that pump tube half full or three quarters full with water. And take your rubber mallet and give this a good whack. You notice at this point, I've taken the globe and the vent off of this lantern. We're getting more aggressive. If I were to actually do this, that's the sort of thing that, that may end up breaking your globe. So you may want to strip it down even to the fount at this point. But this can free up the check valve if, it, if it's stuck. In fact, it usually will. The, the bigger problem is when the check valve doesn't seal. That means there's some kind of crud or gunk or varnish that's, that's plugging this thing up and you need to get it out before it, 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 it'll seal again. Um, opening it up when it's stuck, that's, that's another story. Now, the other thing that a tool like this is good for, and you can purchase a tool that's made just for this that actually fits more snugly than my socket does. Um, the other thing this is good for is there's a, an air tube on the back side of the pump tube where the check valve seals in. So the check valve sits down on the bottom, and on the back, it doesn't just open into the bottom of the fount. Because if, if the check valve didn't work properly, you could have fuel leaking back up. So there's an air tube on the back. I'll throw a, a, a diagram up here so you can get an idea of what it looks like inside the fount because there's no other way to see this. That air tube makes sure that, that when you pump the air in, it's delivered to the top of the fount, but it also makes sure fuel doesn't leak back in. Every once in a while, it's quite rare, but every once in a while, something may plug up that air tube. That is when you want a tool, you want a socket on a long extension or a deep socket on an extension to put down there and give it a whack. And that will usually, nine out of 10 times, it'll free up the clog in the air tube. Again, if it doesn't work, carb cleaner, let it sit, add more carb cleaner, let it sit, and then try giving it another whack. Now, the easiest way to deal with this, not the air tube, but the check valve. The air tube, there's no way to get to it. So again, using some kind of pressure um, with the proper tool, with the socket, that's about the only way to deal with it. But the check valve, you can remove. These check valve tools, they're available from several different sources. This is the one sold by Old Coleman Parts. It's worth the price, especially if you're going to be doing this a number of times. The way this works, So we'll screw the core down into the check valve. Poke it down there until we maybe it's easier if we actually hold it this way. There we go. <clears throat> so thread it down there until it stops. You'll notice this has uh, two little nubs on it. Those will lock with the, the check valve itself. So we'll slide this on. We'll turn it. There we go. It may take a minute to find them. You may have to apply some pressure because frequently these sl this slot is filled with, with old grease and oil. So uh, you'll need to use some pressure probably to get those nubs on the check valve to find it. To make sure that it doesn't slip out, Need to tighten that nut. It doesn't need to be super tight. And now, a bigger crescent wrench would make this a little bit easier. The first time I did that, oh the joy, because I tried to get them out other ways, and it was a major hassle. Even when I did get them out, and I was always worried I'd damage them, so much easier with the right tool. There's our check valve, and you can see there's old grease and everything are on there, just like I said. Go back off the nut. Take this out. The ball is moving freely, which I suspected, <clears throat> but it's not sealing properly. 
So the next thing I'm going to do, I could spray this with carb cleaner. I could put it in a little cup and soak it with carb cleaner. But I found that the most reliable thing to do is to boil this in citric acid for a while. So I'm going to take this in the house and I'll meet you in the kitchen and we'll put this in some, in some citric acid and we'll see if that doesn't clean it up. So here we go. I've got the check valve simmering on the stove in a mixture of roughly 500 mils of water and a teaspoon or so of citric acid powder. It's a fairly strong solution. It won't hurt the check valve, uh, but uh, I want it fairly strong just to make sure it can cut through any fuel or oil varnish that's inside there. Um, I know from experience whatever is inside check valves tends to be quite tenacious. So I'm going to let this simmer away for anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes. If you don't have citric acid, uh, I, it comes as a powder. I buy mine at a local beer and wine supply. Uh, you can use vinegar. Um, you can use lemon juice. Uh, people even use uh, packets of lemon Kool-Aid. Uh, just don't add the sugar, but it's citric acid. Um, it works quite well, and citric acid itself has a fairly non-offensive smell as opposed to vinegar. So. I'll see you in about an hour. All right, our check valve's out of the citric acid bath. The ball is, is moving freely. I can blow in it. There's no leak. So it looks like it's in good shape. Now, if that didn't do it, if carb cleaner didn't do it, if soaking it, boiling it didn't do it, there's one last thing you can try. It may be that the, the bearing or the, the side walls in here are pitted and, and there's just nothing that's going to recover it at that point, and you'll have to get a new one. But it may just be that it's, it's not seeding properly. Something may be out of, out of true inside there. So put it on a firm surface like a vise. Use a nail set. Stick it in there. And then tap it. Tap it increasingly harder. Uh, if it still doesn't set. Take it off, shake it, blow through it, and keep repeating that. And as you shake it, the ball will, will, will slowly rotate around in there. And keep tapping it. You may need to use a larger hammer, you may need to tap it more firmly. At that point, there's nothing really left to lose. Um, and I've, I've had about a 50% success rate recovering them that way. I'm not going to mess with this because it's working properly right now. With our check valve tool back out, thread this onto the end. Line it up with the notches or with the slot. Always use your fingers to get this started so it doesn't get cross-threaded. You should be aware on some of the, the stoves and lanterns since the 80s, there's a, uh, an O-ring on the check valve. So when you take a check valve out on a newer, newer lantern or stove, you might look to see if it's got an O-ring on. If it does, make sure you, you keep it in good order or replace it when you're done. So I'll put some pressure on there. Check valves back in place. Drop the air stem into the pump handle. Right. That's still working properly. Line up the, the holes. All right, fuel cap's tight. Thread the valve or the uh, air stem in.
no leaks. That's good. So the next step is to test fire. That'll be the next video. Thanks for watching.